Today is day one of the Matahe Trail and I'm really looking forward to it. The terrain looks amazing as it should out here and everything that I've heard about this trail it it's supposed to be amazing so here we go excited. What's really nice about today's ride is I don't have to worry about grizzly bears for sure. There's lots of other critters out here to worry about, but a thousand pound bear is not one of them. And that's, that's nice. Now the mountain lions, that's another thing. They're everywhere. There might be one behind this bush I'm coming up on. Nope, not that one. Mostly cow prints, no bike tires on this dirt. They do a very good job of marking the trail though. Great signage. Every once in a while we'll see a sign that has a number on it. That's mileage marker. It's from the other end. Good morning everyone it is sunday october 4th 2020 and i am on the outskirts of grassy butte north dakota i'll be doing the second leg of the mata hay trail today uh, finished up last night near dark um it was uh, a, a much harder ride than i thought it's uh it's as you can tell by the terrain it's a lot of up and down and in and out and twisty super fun but slow going so what i thought would be you know a couple hours to do 10 or 15 miles well it takes quite a bit longer than that i've also developed uh, some bicycle issues so i have to do a little bit of maintenance this morning um after a place a, a cassette um which is a fine piece of art. This is actually machined out of one piece of um, aluminum. Um, very expensive, so unfortunately, I think I've bent a ring on my cassette and I gotta replace that this morning. Also, I have an issues with my seat post and it's something I normally don't do with coffee. I normally do it with more of an evening beverage, but uh, like I said, last night when I finished up, it was getting dark and I had to find a place to camp, which I have and it's absolutely beautiful here cold last night uh mid to low 20s uh everything my dishes i uh, washed last night were frozen this morning and uh very cold uh we're expecting the wind to kick up a little bit today which i'm not too stoked on if you've camped in the wind you know what i'm talking about but the riding today should be fabulous so i'm going to uh, i've already made coffee i'm going to make some breakfast work on my bike a little bit switch costumes and, and hit the trail. We'll see you then.
so I'm beginning the trail today. This is the Bennett Trailhead. You got to sign in uh, every day or sign out, depending on how you look at it, I guess. Um, looks like there's people here that have been here in the last couple of weeks from Alabama, Minnesota, Arkansas, Iowa, Ohio, New York, Kentucky. A lot of people from a lot of places. And I can see why. It's killer. But I'm excited to uh, start the trail today and let's get her done. Windy. Looks like most of the tracks are, that well, could be deer or antelope, I suppose. Some of them are super tiny. Could be baby deer or antelope. No hunting, no bicycling, no collecting, no pets, no campfires, hiking and horseback only. So I've gotten to the section of trail that enters the Theodore Roosevelt National Park and uh, it's the boundary line. And of course, of course, bikes aren't allowed. As you can see, I pushed the gate open and nobody has pushed this gate open in some time. It's closed by a chain, carabiner. So now I'm inside the park and the trail, which is, I mean, what a waste. The trail is completely overgrown and It's just a line on a map that, you know, I get it that you, you know, national parks or, you know, bikes are off limits on, on trails and national parks. Not all of them, however. And I think this one needs to make, to, to be an exception because there's no footprints. There hasn't been any footprints or boot prints on the trail that I've ridden today, except for one guy who was hunting. And yesterday when I went to the other end where it enters you know I had to turn around as well but the trail is just it's just it's just 
being overgrown. So I think it goes through the park for only a couple of miles, kind of skirts the boundary. I believe it goes, goes around this butte, back and around and pops out on the other side, but it's the forbidden fruit right now. I really think the park service should consider that this part of the trail rideable. It would keep the trail, you know, from being overgrown as much and allow people to use it. And it's really a shame. One hand I get it, the other hand I don't. Today being a mountain biker, I don't. If I was a, I don't know, staunch Sierra Club type person, which I'm not, but if I was, I, I would get it. Too bad, it's a shame. But, definitely not gonna get me down today because today is a beautiful day. And <laughs> once again, I find myself being the only person around for I don't know how many miles, but I like it. Be nice to have some company. I do get lonely sometimes, but not a lot of people are able to do what I'm doing. I get that too. Very rare stretch of flat. And smooth. You don't ride on the top of the plateaus very much. You're usually down in them. Twisty, turny, up and down, climby. Which is entertaining. But it is tiresome. This is a nice respite. Totally looks like a mini Grand Canyon. Like 100% looks like a mini Grand Canyon. In North Dakota. It's windy here. One reason it looks that way for sure. So pretty. Cook that corner. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, October 5th, 2020, and I am at the Bennett Campground uh, outside of Grassy Butte, North Dakota. This will be day three on the Mayday Hay Trail. Uh, today, I'm going to ride from here to a place called the Hanson Overlook. Do that as an out and back. Uh, should be about 22, 25 miles, something like that. Uh, it should be a nice day. The problem is uh, last night, which was beautiful, the wind came up about midnight and it has been ripping. That's probably 30 to 40 mile an hour winds with gusts higher than that. So today is going to definitely be a challenging day. 
this morning, um, you know, making coffee and I forego my normal breakfast and just made it, made some oatmeal real quick and then, and, uh, an apple. But, um, yeah, the wind was definitely an issue right now. I hope it doesn't affect my riding and I hope it, it, it lays down, but the good news is it isn't raining. So I'll take that. Um, so that's my plan for today and let's get going. So I've been riding for uh, 45 minutes or so and, uh, the wind is absolutely relentless. It's probably 40 mile an hour plus winds. It's uh, This is already gonna be my longest day on the Mayday Hay thus far, most challenging thus far. And the wind is just ridiculous. But it's beautiful, I'll give it that. This section of the trail of the Mayday Hay is called Cottonwood and you can certainly see why super pretty and it's blocking the wind bonus I'm adjacent to a creek. Here's some of the local handiwork done by the, the beavers. I guess they're beavers. I went down to the creek, which is over there, but I didn't see any beaver. I did see chunks like this down there, which I don't know, I've never seen a beaver move a chunk like that it seems to be kind of big but i guess they do that's a little little cottonwood creek here kind of down in a little little depression here it's nice to get out of the wind for a second oh my gosh brutal i'm at my turnaround point for the day it's a place called the hansen overlook which there's a, a valley here and there used to be a ranch here, the Hanson Ranch. And according to the placard here, um, it was here from 1923 to 1937 and then drought and the depression ran them out and they went to Washington State. but. They moved here as part of the original Homestead Act, which allowed 320 acres of free land um, for you to homestead. And all you had to do apparently is just pay a filing fee. So unfortunately, a lot of the land uh, that people homesteaded was, wasn't great for farming or ranching or really anything. And, and then the drought and the depression and so a lot of the land was returned to the uh, the, the state, uh, and this was actually uh, as part of the U.S. Forest Service now. But there was a, was a building there and a building there, and the, the home was up on that flat spot. Man, is it windy! 
I can see why they moved just for that. There's a corral down there. Pretty. I'm gonna turn around now, get back, head for shelter. It's taking me a couple hours. Never seen a badger before. That was crazy. Wow. Wow, a badger. That was, that's cool. Day three on the Mayday Hay Trail. Complete, 24 miles, a little over 3,100 feet of climbing. It's a jet, but the story of the day is the wind. Oh my gosh, and it is super windy here at my campsite. I'm hoping it lays down tonight, but who knows. So anyway, time for a cold beverage and have a seat. Got a little bike maintenance to do. I don't know if I'll be able to cook dinner tonight because of the wind. I might have to have a cold dinner, but that's okay. It's easy. Easy to do. Easy to clean. All right. Well, that wraps it up. Good day. Good morning, everyone. Today is Tuesday, the 6th of October, 2020. And today, this morning, I've packed up and I'm transitioning from the Bennett campground where I've been for three nights uh, for the first three stages of the Mata Hay Trail to the Magpie campground, which is uh, an hour south of here for the next two stages. Right now, uh, the wind is non-existent and I certainly hope it stays that way. I checked the weather and they're calling for 45 mile an hour gusts, which my gosh, I hope that doesn't happen. But I'm prepared for it, I guess, mentally, if nothing else. Um, last night it dropped temperature. Uh, it got quite chilly today. I think the high is supposed to be in the low 60s, which is great. Um, just praying that the wind doesn't kick up. Um, so yeah, transitioning south, 
for the next two stages um, should be great. arrived at the next uh, jumping off point here called uh, Magpie Campground and uh, as you can tell it is <laughs> it's nice and treed and a little bit protected still breezy but it's <laughs> by far more protected than the last campsite was because of the wind uh, there's about a dozen sites here and there's no one nobody here it looks to be one of the older sites in the area uh, I only say that because of um, the tables look a little bit older and the, and there's trees that have, you know, I don't know. It just looks older. Um, but it's still super nice, quiet, peaceful wind, great view. Um, today's ride, uh, I'm going to head north back towards the Hanson Overlook where I turned around yesterday. Uh, something unique on today's ride is there's supposed to be some ice caves out there somewhere. So gonna try to see if I can spot those and uh, you know, yesterday I saw that badger which you know, I'd never seen a badger before in the wild as far as I can remember I'm gonna keep my eyes peeled and hopefully see another one of those uh, from a distance I hear there can be quite tenacious critters so I don't want to tangle with a badger but I'd like to see one and uh, yeah it's uh it's in the high 60s breezy a few wispy clouds here and there it should be a great day so I'm just JRA and I come across this thing out here. It's kind of in the middle of nowhere. There's some fenced off property here. Um, but I'm not sure really what it is. It has been here a long time. You can tell by the hardware that was used on it. I'm not sure if you were supposed to hang something from it or tie something to it or some sort of weird jail torture thing trippy like this has been cracked it looks like it's quasi re-welded at some point I don't know you know what it is, drop a drop a comment below. Let me know. can see any of this but I'm going down in a cave which I don't really feel that comfortable doing because nobody knows where I am under the cave and It is freezing in here. Probably why I call it the ice cave. Oh. I do not want to get stuck in here. Here's, I think, another one. 
super creepy going down here. I am in the middle of nowhere by myself. Nobody knows I'm here. And there's these caves. They call ice caves. They're first, oh my gosh. First one I went into was super cold. I didn't see any ice. And this one, oh man. The only light I have is on my phone. back any further it's cold in here I can see why they call them that but I've been to some caves graffiti I've been to some caves what I would consider an ice cave in northern California they're kind of lava tubes there was actually ice in those but I can imagine back in the day, there might have been some Indians here. I don't see any smoke, any signs of any kind of fire in here. Uh, that. Oh. Alright. Well, ice caves. Somewhere in the middle of nowhere in North Dakota. It's like it's quite a bit of a downhill from here. I don't know where else it would go, but kind of frightening because I got to turn around eventually and come back. But here's what it is. Might have a good bit of climbing left in the day. Instead of worrying about that, worry about how much fun we're going to have going down. Get on. Just crossed Bicycle Creek. B E I C E G E L. Bicycle. Interesting way to spell bicycle, but hey, it's their trail, right? So, this is where I turned around yesterday coming from the north. I rode from Bennett Campground. To here which is called the Hanson Overlook and this is the the valley where uh, the Hanson family homesteaded uh, and so this is where I turn around and head back south to the Magpie campground so I've ridden 17 miles to this point and I've climbed 1875 feet and I have gone down 1,509 feet. And it is 320. Not really into cutting it this close. 
need to hammer it out on the way back. I don't want to ride in the dark. There's no moon until pretty late. Um, looks like I got a fair bit of climbing and uh, probably about 13 or 14 miles to go. So better get on it. There's a critter up here. Definitely met his demise. Wow. Cow. Nothing left of that guy. A little bit of rug left on him. That's it. Pick clean. Rough. Made it back to camp. Um, that ride was, uh, today's ride was 30 miles, 3,200 feet of climbing. And uh, I got back to camp and there's one other guy here who's bikepacking and he started down in Med uh, Medford? Medora. He started down in Medora. Uh, he's from Germany. And, um, so he's bikepacking and today's his his last day. He's gonna be picked up in the muddle in the morning by some sort of shuttle. But anyway, uh so yeah, I'm sharing this entire campsite with one other guy who is bikepacking. Weird though is when I got here today there was no wood or anything near the campsite and now somebody has placed some some trimmings here and some trimmings um over at the campsite next door and he said he had some trimmings near his, his uh campsite so i kind of weird don't know what's going on with that but uh all in all pretty good day i'm going to um i just took a shower which i needed it was uh the wind the sweat just you don't really feel yourself sweating and you're not sweaty but when you finish you're just like salty probably TMI but anyway time for some dinner gonna take uh take the grill down and get that going and yeah probably gonna turn in as soon as it gets dark <laughs> if you made it this far through the first four stages of the Mata Hay Trail then you won't want to miss part two the final four stages of the Mata Hay Trail if you like what you see please subscribe thanks for watching